Hey everyone, a lot of players ask how they are supposed to know what to do macro-wise in their own games. We always say it's very situational, and today I have a perfect example from a plat 4 game on my smurf where I change my game plan midway through the game based on how it's going. I'm going to break down why I make each decision and how it made the game much easier. So let's first catch you up with what has happened so far. I won lane with about a 20 CS lead, nothing crazy, with my top and bot losing, both dying solo. I go for roam here 10 minutes, kind of ganking top lane. I know my Orn has ult and Garen is low, so I engage on the buy first. I want my Orn to ult early so I can kill them both, but he does it way too late, saving it to hit both of them I guess. He only needs to hit Vi with it so I can kill her then kill the Garen. By the time he hits the ult, it's too late and I'm forced to back off. Then about a minute later, my jungler was at dragon and started fighting, but watching my bot lane, they were playing really scared, which is something I took note of in my head. Then another fight 2 minutes later, where we fight 2v2 with Vi and Victor, then our Orn roams down, missing a very easy knock up on Vi, and not using his abilities properly at all afterwards. He doesn't use his ult, and we can easily kill both of them if he just goes in. I can't go in first, and he's a tank with Vi pretty low. And then finally, a minute later, my bot lane dies to Draven in top jungle, and they use Draven ult plus Leona ult, meaning we can fight. I know Draven doesn't have flash. My jungler is right behind me, so I use Q hitting him and Leona, then use my ult on both, but my set doesn't use his stun and just ults Leona into the back, not hitting the Draven at all, then I die. Alright, so after watching all of these plays, it was clear our team had no clue how to team fight or play their champions. So instead of continuing to try and make good engages and hope my teammates know how to play, I decided to start playing extra selfish and focus on just getting myself fed. To do this, you have to think about your champion and what they are good at. For example, this game I'm playing Diana. Diana is great in a 1v1 situation and taking towers, essentially split pushing. If I was something like Orianna, Ori is good at clearing waves and punishing the enemy for overextending clumped up sieging towers. So if I was her, I would just focus on that. But as Diana, I'm going to power farm and side lane as much as possible. So I run out of base, clear mid wave, then clear our jungler's bot side jungle since he's in top side. Then even take Gromp from Kai'Sa, which makes her rage and use her heal. I know this Kai'Sa will do nothing to help me carry this game after watching the previous plays. After that, I go into bot lane and start pushing. Victor comes to match me which is good because it means they have one less person that is grouped which is the win condition for the enemy team. They are smashing us in fights so by splitting it spreads them out. I can't keep pushing though with the enemy jungler missing. If I try to kill Victor it's just gambling that Vi isn't here. If she is here and I die, I'm off the map not putting pressure bot for a good 40 seconds which can lose us the game. When you have to carry you can't die or the game falls apart. You need to be doing something productive constantly farming, clearing waves, split pushing, etc. After recalling, I saw Vi top, so I go back bot and start pushing again. Now, I know Victor was pushing this, and like I said, Diana excels at 1v1s. I know Vi isn't here now, so I throw my Q hitting the wave, setting up for an all in if Victor stays. He stays, and he thinks since my Q is down, I can't engage on him, but I use my dash on the minion next to him so my E resets, then ult him and all in. I kill him and this is when the game completely turns. We were losing really hard and like I said, their win condition is grouping with how hard they are destroying us in teamfights. But because Victor matched my split push instead, not only do I kill him, my team gets a kill in the overextended Leona in our jungle. So as you can see, spreading the team out makes the enemy team mess up their macro. After that, my team has a 4v3 in mid since Garen is split pushing top and my team kills the Vi and Draven as well. This leads to our team getting Baron, while I'm getting bot tower. Obviously a huge game swinging play. And this is all because I went to a side lane and decided to stop grouping completely. The game isn't saved yet, but it's a good start. I have a lot of gold now, so I want to reset with the Baron buff and spend it. When I come out of base, it's back to the power farm. I take my whole bot side jungle since my jungler is top, and go back to split pushing bot. As I'm doing that, the enemy Vi and Victor try to gank me. This is just not a good play because remember, they should be grouping. They should be forcing a 5v4 on my team while I split push. But I can easily delay and stall this play out until my set gets closer and we kill the victor. Then we chase down the Leona as well since they all overextended for this terrible play. 
With that play, we use Baron to get two bot towers and bot inhib. With that bot inhib, we will have constant pressure down there now, so I don't need to be there. I want to split top side and take all that gold in towers. We haven't even gotten tier 1 yet. I try to recall, but it gets stopped and Garen flash alts me to kill me. Like I said, it's very bad to die when you need to carry. Luckily, we have bot lane pressure and no important objectives are up, so we're not going to lose much out of it. But don't be like me and just recall safely. After I respawn, it's back to split pushing. I go top for the reasons I said before. My teammates start diving mid 4v5 while I'm splitting, which is obviously trolling. Don't get baited into using your TP in these situations, just keep pushing like I do here. Towers give plenty of gold and you can keep pressuring. If you TP in, you lose the pressure you have in top and might die as well. Now, the enemy team sends Vi back for me and I prepare to dive her since I'm level 16 and she's level 13, but I'm not sure if she has more behind her that are recalling after taking our mid inhib, so I back off. But because they have Vi with me and Garen dealing with bot inhib, which is two lanes of pressure, our team catches Victor in mid alone, getting a kill. Because of that, I can now rotate to mid and look for a fight or for towers. I go behind to dive anyone that was here, but they were smart and backed off. But we get the tier 1 tower and back away. If you look at the gold difference now, in 6 minutes we brought the gold from 6,000 behind to only 1,000 because of all the towers we're getting. I have a lot of gold to spend, so I reset and grab blue buff. If you look at the minimap, Garen is bot clearing the super minions with Draven at wolves and Victor in mid. Because of this, I have a good feeling he's alone and I know I can easily 1v1 him, so I head down there. I jump on him with my Q and E and then ult, accidentally hourglass, and eventually kill him, but I die to buy. If I didn't accidentally hourglass, I could kill them both, but mistakes happen. Challenger by the way, coach by the way, whatever. But luckily, since Garen was dead and Vi used her ult on me, my team had a good chance of winning this fight with the vision advantage and cooldown advantage, and they managed to win it. When I respawn, my team is doing Baron and I know the enemy can't contest, so I clear the supers in mid and take the enemy blue then get a little bit more gold from my death cap since I know the next fight should be the last one and it's a huge power spike. I grab the death cap and immediately TP back into mid with my team. I don't want to give the enemy team a chance to engage 5v4. Also, you might be wondering why I want to group now. Two reasons. One, we have Baron. And the second, which is more important, I split push so much this game I'm insanely far ahead. I'm level 18 with 300 CS. The enemy team is anywhere from 6 to 3 levels down from me, so I'm strong enough to carry the fights on my own now, with my teammates having to do very little work. But we start CG mid, and our Orn randomly uses his ult, wasting it, and as we can see, nothing changed this game and it's a good thing I started to play very selfish. We don't want to dive here and just want the minions to do their thing. But our center gives me her shroud so the enemy team can't see that it's me and I see 4 of them clumped up with our next wave arriving. So I jump in, ulting all four, which wins the fight on its own because of how fed I am, and we end the game. Also, if any of you guys are upset about me taking the Kai'Sa's Gromp a while ago, she did the least amount of damage on our team, doing 10,000 in 33 minutes. So me taking Gromp was the right call. Before we recap, you should know, if you're not signed up to skill cap, then you're missing out. We have exclusive content such as Challenger Challenges, where we show how to climb out of every elo in the worst case scenario games, which we don't release to YouTube. Alongside over 700 additional guides covering just about everything you need. Oh, and if you don't significantly improve while using our service, you get a full refund, so there's literally no risk. It only makes sense to sign up if you want to escape Elo Hell. Check us out at skillcap.com. Alright guys, so as you can see, this is why it's impossible to tell you what to do every game as it's always situational. In this game, I saw in a few plays that our teammates didn't know how to play their champions and even if I set up a play that we should easily win, it didn't work. So instead, I played to just get myself fed and take advantage of the poor macro choices in lower elos. By causing chaos like this, the enemy messed up and threw the game and let me get insanely fed just by farming. But that's going to bring us to the end of this one, we hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.